How's it going? My name is James and this video is going to be a quick tutorial on getting ExpressVPN up and running on your desktop and mobile device, as well as looking at each respective application and their functionality on both platforms. So if you were considering trying out ExpressVPN or having trouble selecting a subscription plan, I hope you find this video useful. So for starters, ExpressVPN offers three different plans to choose from, a monthly, a six month, and an annual plan. Each plan gives you access to all of ExpressVPN's features, with the only difference really being the amount of time that you're paying for each service. The monthly plan starts at $12.95. The biannual or six month plan will run you $59.95, the equivalent of $9.99 a month. Or you can opt for the annual plan, which will run you about $100 a year, or according to their plan, $8.32 a month. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the monthly plan. From there, you'll enter your email address followed by your payment information. ExpressVPN accepts a wide variety of payment options from most credit cards to PayPal, as well as Bitcoin and a few obscure payment methods I've honestly never heard of. Maybe they're not obscure to you, I'm not sure, I've just, I've just never seen them. Either way though, once you confirm your purchase, you'll then be taken to a confirmation page that will have a pre-generated password. So if you're wondering why it didn't initially prompt you to create a password, well, that's why. They just give you one. You have the option to roll with this password or change it. I just opted to stick with it and proceed to the next page where you'll actually receive your activation code. Also on this page, you'll see the multitude of platforms that ExpressVPN is available on. The right hand side should automatically display your preferred OS. In my case, that's Windows. So at this point, make sure to keep your activation code on deck. You can copy it and then paste it later. Uh, we'll need that in a second, but for now, go ahead and download the installer. On Windows, the installation process takes a minute in most cases. You'll continue past a few feature screens, and then when prompted, you'll click on the Setup Express VPN button. This will take you to the activation code screen, so hopefully you have that code copied and ready to be pasted. Upon entering your personal code, you'll be able to sign into the VPN, and afterwards, you'll be asked a few startup and diagnostics questions, which then you could opt to decline or confirm. After that, you'll arrive at ExpressVPN's home screen. Now the ExpressVPN client itself is probably one of the most intuitive and user-friendly VPNs out there. There's honestly not too much to explain on this landing screen. I mean, the big power button connects you to the server of your choice, displays a green semicircle indicating that the connection has been made. Clicking on the drop-down menu, on the other hand, will open the server menu where you can pick and choose from ExpressVPN's abundance of servers. You could choose from its list of recommended servers, sort by country, or you could just search the server you'd like straight up by name. Hopping back onto the home screen and clicking on the menu icon in the upper left-hand side will bring up a few options. Clicking on the VPN locations will open up the window that we previously mentioned containing ExpressVPN server list. If you click on speed tests, this will open up a speed test where ExpressVPN batch tests as many servers as possible. And this is pretty much so you can kind of gauge their performance. Uh, this is sorted by speed index, latency, and download speed. In simplest terms, you'd like a high speed index, low latency, and high download speed. Keep in mind, you can only access a speed test when you're not connected to a VPN server. Clicking on options will then pull up the options window, which will allow you to configure ExpressVPN to your liking. The general tab will have your basic startup options that you can customize. The important feature here, however, is network lock. This is essentially ExpressVPN's version of a kill switch. I mean, it pretty much has the same functionality. It's meant to stop internet traffic in the event that your internet connection drops, so it does that. You can also choose to enable split tunneling here, which allows you to decide which applications or devices will not use the VPN while it's connected to Express. The account and protocol tabs are pretty self-explanatory and let you either configure your account or protocol settings respectively. ExpressVPN has protocols from UDP, OpenVPN, to PPTP, and everything in between. The shortcuts tab is a fairly interesting one that allows you to add up to five shortcuts of your most used apps or websites right onto ExpressVPN's home screen. This function is surprisingly useful, especially if you have ExpressVPN launch upon startup. Browsers link you to the Firefox and Chrome extensions, and finally, the Advanced tab contains security features such as IPv6 leak protection, as well as a DNS configuration that I highly recommend you leak checked. So, 
That pretty much wraps up the desktop walkthrough. Like many multi-platform apps, ExpressVPN's mobile offering is essentially a stripped down version of its desktop sibling, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. For starters, hop onto the app or Google Play Store and search up ExpressVPN. Once you've downloaded it, you'll then be asked to sign in and go through a series of onboarding questions. This is typical on mobile apps. The important question here being the option to allow ExpressVPN to add VPN configurations. You want to check this off. Once you've made it through the barrage of onboarding screens, you'll see ExpressVPN's famously user-friendly home screen. If you've used the desktop application before, then this screen is gonna look very familiar. Connecting to a VPN server is as easy as hitting the power button and selecting your server of choice. If you tap on the drop-down menu, again, you'll see the list of servers. Whilst connected to a VPN, you'll also notice a little notification with a shield icon indicated that you're connected to the VPN. Navigating to the options menu in the upper right hand corner will bring up a sparse menu. Again, Express on mobile is essentially a more lean version of the VPN on desktop. The settings menu here gives you the option to customize the VPN protocol, auto reconnect options, diagnostics, and VPN configuration. With that said, there's not that much more to the mobile app, so I think that pretty much concludes this tutorial of ExpressVPN. The applications themselves are incredibly user-friendly to begin with and easy to get up and running. Combine that ease of use with a wealth of servers capable of fast VPN speeds, and it's easy to see why so many people choose ExpressVPN over the competition. So I hope you found this little tutorial useful. If you did, it'd be appreciated if you dropped the video a thumbs up. Let us know what VPNs you'd like us to check out next in the comment section below. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe. Again, my name is James and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.